Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we've already talked about what's going on in the market and everything is going great with that uh, potential Bitcoin ETF and why I think it can go through. What's going on uh, with Tether and the audit, everything seems to check out and Cardano being 100% uh, decentralized. So we already know what's going on there and I want to talk to you about what's going on with uh, a new property that we actually picked up and how this relates to cryptocurrency as far as purchasing things with crypto and the things that I learned over the last 48 hours kind of been a little bit of a whirlwind so uh, we are still me and, me and my wife are still in Puerto Rico it is April 1st April Fool's Day it is uh, almost high noon PR time and this is the property that we picked up and it's in a it's in a great I think it's it's in a great area just looks a little bit run down these are the things that we look for great areas run down properties need a little TLC but uh, on the outside, it's, it doesn't look so great. But on the inside, this looks pretty darn good. It's already furnished and everything else. And uh, what's great about it is that everything is new. Uh, paintings and uh, uh, the, the walls and the structures and, and how things are, are working about. So it's actually a good, uh, a good placement. And the reason why, why we picked it up is because it was really a no-brainer, honestly. Uh, this is actually already on Airbnb. These are things that we look for. We like to do short-term rentals. And uh, for us, this just made total sense. When we were coming to Puerto Rico, we we're looking at uh, places to rent. Very hard to rent things here in Puerto Rico because there are so many people either coming here, looking to live, or they were on spring break, or there's a lot of things going on where people are just moving over. And you've seen it all uh, different, even YouTube videos where people are moving out of America to Puerto Rico. Why is that? Well, it's because there's no capital gains tax and the uh, personal tax is only 4%. Now, there's some loopholes and, and uh, different criteria, which we'll go about in another video. I'm going to bring on a person who actually lives here and we'll tell you all about those stipulations. But I just want to talk about uh, this property. And uh, we picked it up, like I said, because it's a fantastic area. It looks really great. It's already on Airbnb and it is book solid. So for us, this was like, you know, where do we sign up? And it's amazing because like you can, you can go in one section of town and it's, you know, a certain price and right across the street, you could have triple, quadruple, quadruple the price. So we don't like to do that. We like to go for a little bit uh, more uh, stable and things that are going. But again, if it's already rented, this is now an asset and not a liability. So what happened with this, this property uh, is that we were going to finance it through the bank. But right now, the rates are so ridiculously low. Thank you, Fed. We appreciate you. And uh, because of that, people are buying up things left and right. And when you have like a 2%, 2.5% uh, interest rate, even, even for investment properties, uh, 3.75 or 3.25, whatever it is now, uh, everybody's going to want to get in on these properties, especially this one. So to finance it here in Puerto Rico, it takes a little bit of time. Some people say it'll take three months to finance. Some people say it takes eight months. We're... We were gonna go through the process, but when we saw it, then all of a sudden, all the different uh, offers started to roll in. People were like, we want it for here, we want it for there, we want it for there. And here's a little quick tip. And this happened to me when I was looking for property in uh, Las Vegas. If you really want a property and you have the ability, uh, just say, I'll pay cash. And that just trumps everything. So you don't have to, if you're a buyer, you're like, great, I get the cash right now, I'll do that. So you don't have to wait three months to eight months. There's not the, the paperwork and the background checks and everything else. It's just, here you go. So that's what we did because uh, we didn't want to lose this property because again, it's already rented and it only makes sense. And I think that the value is going to uh, only go up. There's a couple other factors that I don't want to discuss in this video. It's a great property. So the thing is though, is that when you want to pay for cash, first of all, on this channel, it's a cryptocurrency channel, right? So when people are talking about like, oh, you know, crypto is going to be uh, the next everything and uh, we're going to, you know, uh, use crypto to buy everything. Well, not today. It doesn't work like that yet. Uh, so if you think that crypto is going to replace the U.S. dollar anytime soon, it's not. It's going to take a very long time, I think. Now, what is a very long time? It's up for you to decide. I'm seeing years and years and years for that to actually happen. So when we want to offer cash, you need to be liquid. And I know people would always, you know, talk to me about like, well, why do you have some cash on hand? Well, because cash is still king. And I hate to say it, that's what it is. So in another video, I talked about how I don't have much cash on hand because I'm like, why would I have, you know, uh, cash on hand when I can just put into crypto 
and change it over, which I did for the majority. So in this one, I was caught a little short, honestly. And I was like, shoot, I got to, you know, liquidate some things so I can get actual cash. But before that happened, I had the agent go to the seller and I said, ask them if they'll take Bitcoin. Because for Bitcoin, first of all, everybody knows about Bitcoin, most people. And I thought, if I can just do a transfer of Bitcoin, that would be fantastic. So uh, they went to the seller, said, hey, we have a buyer who would like to pay you in Bitcoin. Just give us your wallet address. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. So again, uh, we are still early. If you don't think we're early, I mean, this would have been a slam dunk uh, for everything because to go through the banks, now you have to go through a lot of different checks and a lot of different loops and you have to do a wire transfers and there is cost associated with that, which isn't much, but still, and it could take between, you know, depending on the bank, hours, two days. So why not just do it with Bitcoin? Look, I can send Bitcoin to anyone, anyone in the world, uh, cost me next to nothing, and I need no permission to do so. And also on top of that, if this guy would have taken Bitcoin, which he said no to, it would have appreciated probably at least double X this year. I mean, if we're looking at 60,000, I think it's going to be 150,000. So whatever. But uh, I think he needed uh, the cash for something else. Okay. So that's one thing I learned. I learned that, you know, people aren't going to take cryptocurrency all over the place. Not yet, anyhow. So that's a problem. I need cash now. So what do I do? Well, the thing is, since I don't have, I don't have the uh, full amount in my bank account, I need uh, some liquidity somewhere. So what do I do? Well, I didn't really want to sell my Bitcoin because if I sell my Bitcoin right now, first of all, that is going to be uh, a problem for uh, capital gains tax. Uh, so I want to pay on that. Uh, second of all, I believe that if I cash out of my Bitcoin, what's going to happen? Well, it's probably going to go up. I mean, it could go down, but I don't think it's going to go like a major dip or going to go from like 60,000 to 20,000. So I was like, well, it's gonna, that's not a great uh, plan. But I did take a look at uh, the places where I had it at and I had limits to what I could cash out on. Like on Voyager, it was 25,000. Uh, with uh, coin, I don't have any coin base anyhow. Um, Celsius, there was also a limit. And then for uh, Gemini, which is where I have some other stuff on there, there was a limit about, about the same. So, the, so I said, well, shoot, I only have limits on each one of those. Where do I you know, get this? Because I had some in my business bank accounts because I have to keep that uh, on the business one. So I said, okay, well, I'm just gonna do an owner's draw and I take some money out, but again, I was still short. So what do you do? So what I did was I just went on to Celsius, went on my phone and I said, hey, Celsius, why well, didn't say it like that? You, just, you, you, you click on Celsius and, and there's a button that says, uh, it's a C on the bottom right hand corner and there's a uh, button there that says borrow. Now this is not available for uh, every person who has Celsius. This is not available for e even everybody in America. I think Californians, you can't even do that. But Texas, hey, you can, so great. So I clicked on that button and uh, it was, I've done this before, we've done videos before about it. I took a small loan uh, against Ethereum, it was only like $1,000. And uh, it was very smooth, very easy. And it was, it was done like within uh, an hour or so, and that was it. So what I did then is I just said, okay, I wanna collateralize X amount of uh, a Bitcoin. And uh, I want you to sell, send me dollars into my bank account. And that's the other part that I needed to fund this project. And what was great about it is that uh, it was done. I put this in last night at, I think, by 10 p.m., 9.30, 10 p.m. And then this morning, a Celsius representative emailed me, and I double-checked to make sure that the domain where the email came from was from Celsius.network. It came on over and said, hey, Rob, we got a to verify some things. Do you have something that like a utility bill or a bank statement that has your address? Sure. Sent that over. And within 30 minutes, I was approved for a sizable amount uh, for the rest of the money that I needed to fund this, uh, uh, this, uh, this property. So when I'm looking at things, here's what I, here's what I learned all in all. And then I will just say this, um, not all banks are created equal because in one of my bank accounts, my other, one of my business accounts for, for Wells Fargo, um, that was where I was gonna get the bulk of it. 
and they said, you have a $5,000 limit uh, per 24 hours and a $6,000 limit uh, over 30 days. So that was not going to fly whatsoever. And there was no way around it. So that was it. Thankfully, USA is like, we have no limits. We'll help you out. And uh, fun's going to go from there. And it's going to go to uh, the, uh, the, the company and should be no problem. So what I learned moving forward is this. Even though we talk about a great cryptocurrency is cash is still king and you're going to need it. And uh, it's like my friend CJ over there, Mark Rebellion, say, you know, somebody just need uh, uh, dry powder on the sidelines to get into a position. And in this position, it was a investment property and it worked out pretty well. Second thing I learned is that, uh, again, people, even though it uh, works tremendously well, uh, you could, I could have easily sent this guy Bitcoin and between, uh, and there would have been some other advantages for that. But it uh, didn't work out for the guy because he didn't really trust it. Uh, and it, it taught me that as much as we talk about it, not everybody's like us. And that's just how it is. Um, second thing I learned is that if you're going to do a loan, make sure the loans work for you. Uh, so for this one, this, this loan that I'm going to put into this property is going to work for me. And what was great about this is that um, we took, for the amount of Bitcoin that I had to put up to get the 1% interest rate, which is fantastic. Uh, I thought it would be, you know, once it drops to like, because right now it's at 60,000. I thought maybe if it drops to like 45,000, I have to re collateralize. But they said no. For us in um, Celsius to make sure that you have enough collateral, if Bitcoin drops to 22,000, then we'll ask for some additional collateral. I was like, 22,000, that's not going to happen. And then they said, and if it drops to 18,000, we will potentially liquidate, but we'll notify you first. And I'm like, well, that's definitely not going to happen. So when I talk about loans, and then this is for a, this is for a one-year loan. Uh, they did tell me that if you want to extend a loan, that's no problem. It'll just be 1%. And again, you have to, depending on how much collateral you put in, uh, you can get a 1%, 6%, or 9%. So you have to really collateralize uh, these loans. But again, uh, if this is the case for 1%, to against my Bitcoin, and that's Bitcoin today. What is Bitcoin going to be in two months, three months, six months, two years, three years, five years? I mean, you're using an asset to buy another asset that will make you more passive income. And then you just take it out, and that's the great thing. So a couple of questions people always say is like, well, if I do that, will I earn interest on my Bitcoin that I collateralized? No, you will not. Second thing is, when the price of Bitcoin goes up, do I owe more on that Bitcoin? No, you will not. You will just put the money, you will just, whatever your loan is amount for, you just pay that amount and you get your, your cryptocurrency back, no matter if it goes way higher or not. So again, I think this is a, it's a win-win situation for me and them. And uh, that's kind of safe. So, and the last thing I learned was this. And I think this is a lesson for everybody. Um, even though, I, like I said, like 25,000 a day, it seems like a lot right now for a lot of people, but remember where you're at. For cryptocurrency, this could 2x, well, depending on what cryptocurrency you're into. This is not financial advice, but I look at my portfolio, I'm like, I expect things to either uh, be go between 2x and 30x. So if you're in that same boat as me, and you're like, well, I don't have that much. Well, yeah, that's true now. But what's gonna happen in, again, three months, five months? eight months, you'll be surprised. So this is just a cautionary tale for everybody. If whatever exchange you're using, because if you want to cash out or if you want to get loans, make sure that you have you know, all that thing taken in place. If you want to cash out, make sure that you ask them to raise your limits and what the requirements are. Make sure that you can buy more because 25,000, let's say you have a million dollars. How much, how long is that going to take you if it's $25,000 per day? So do these things now before they bite you in the A and you got a lot of problems uh, during your exit strategy. Uh, all right, so uh, that's it. So first of all, if you uh, got uh, a little um, <laughs> value from this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. That always uh, helps the channel greatly. Also consider subscribing because a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And uh, that is it for today. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.